Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. We're going to go into one of the most anticipated moments where the Lord spoke something so profound. Open up my spirit. Everything went silent and we title it Silence in Heaven. Listen very closely. We were doing a telecast and a special recap on the title, The Coming Two Seals. And as I said to you over and over, the Lord is about to separate. There is going to be a separation, a rude awakening in the moment of a midnight cry. And the Lord takes the church up in rapture. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 8. And we title it, Silence in Heaven. But I tell you, there is reasons and divine purpose. And not only reasons and purpose written all over in this whole thing. Why God called it the sequence. And that we're reaching the climax of the sequence. The Spirit of God open up my spirit. Open up my ear, and the Lord took me into a silent moment. Everything was silent, and there he revealed to me Revelation chapter 8. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 8, because the reason God over and over said that we are now at a point of not only the sequence, but consecutive events that will happen globally around the world and every believer, every man, all of civilization and all of humanity, especially the globalists, the left, the pagans, the atheists, the papacy, the Roman Empire, everyone around the world needs to listen to this telecast. I title it, Silence in Heaven. Let's pick it up with verse number one, Revelation chapter eight. It says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half hour. I'm going to stop right here. You wonder, what's the reason? He's only read part of the verse, but is not only part of the verse, but I want to drop something to you because when the Lord opened up my spirit, and open up my ear, everything was silent, and all of a sudden, the word of the Lord came, and the Lord said to me, half an hour, and which is 30 minutes, listen very closely to verse number one, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour, verse number two says, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. I have said over and over, and the Lord said to me, the vision concerning the vision that he gave me and brought to me in the city of Hong Kong, and you know that vision already, about seven angels in a single file, and then there were another set of angels that broke off their lines, and they had trumpets in their mouth, there was one that they followed. Listen very closely here. It was in the title, The Coming Two Seals, when all of a sudden, everything went silent, and the glory of God came forward, His Word, and the Lord said, Son, about a half hour, and then everything went quiet in silence. Now, it says here in verse number two, and I saw heaven, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Verse number three, then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was giving much incense that he shall offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Verse number four, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints, saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Remember, remember what I said. There is coming a time 
that I believe that there is coming the tipping of the bow and the prayers of the saints in the believers, all of your prayers, all of your requests will be answered by the living God. Amen. Glory to God. Then the fifth verse says, Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noise, thundering, lightning, and earthquake. And remember, I did a title, The Quake, The Quaking Sound, The Sound, and The Sound of the Trumpet. This was a moment which was not only glorious, but was so profound in the sense that everything went silent. Open my ear. He delivered the word. And what I want to warn the whole world, warn the nations, as I speak and address the nation and the whole world and all of humanity and all of civilization, that the Spirit of God has said over and over, the seven bowls, the coming wrath of God, the coming judgments of God, then he took me into this vision where I titled it, The Vision of the Key, and he always said he will unlock the bottomless pit, and the Spirit of God is making it very clear that the next thing that's going to happen is the start of the great tribulation, and the Lord just said, the Shemitah cycle. Pay, pay close attention as I read verse number 6 of Revelation chapter 8. So the seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Let me read it again. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Verse number 7. The first angel sounded and hell and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Verse number 8 of Revelation chapter 8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Remember Revelation chapter 16, the seven bowls, the coming wrath of God, God's judgment. But remember Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 12, and Revelation chapter 13. And the Lord said these words before I said to you Revelation 13. He said, the mark of the beast. And remember when I spoke the title, the vision of the key, the Lord said, and the one that comes out of the... Uh, out of the bottomless pit, excuse me for that, the Spirit of God is sending warnings that we're about to be raptured, but there is going to be those that will stay behind for the great tribulation, and there is going to be major consequences, major suffering. As I said in the title, the Islamic mystique, the dream, the voice, the open vision, the Islamic mystique, I saw the harlot, and I have said over and over that I believe that during the great tribulation, they not only force you to receive the mark of the beast, they enforce the Sharia law and the rise of Islam. Now, I want to go to verse number 9 of Revelation chapter 8. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships, ships were destroyed. Verse number 10 says, Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on the third of the river and on the springs of the water. Now, you know that what I'm going to talk to you about because the next verse is exactly what the Lord said to me right after he said to me half an hour and I knew that it was Revelation chapter 8. The Spirit of God after bringing and delivering his word first causing me to go into a moment of silence to open up my spirit, pop open my ear, deliver the word and then the second word that the Lord delivered to me was the word wormwood and then it says in verse number 11 of Revelation chapter 8 the name of the star is wormwood a third of the water became wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter we're gonna go 
to verse number 12, but let us take our time. And what I want to explain to you is this. That's why in the title, The Coming Two Seals, I kept practically repeating over and over because I wanted to say the title. I wanted to tell you the title. I wanted to tell you that we were going to go and do a telecast from Revelation chapter 8 because God is making it very clear. It is the sequence. It is the climax of the sequence. It is where global events, global war, like the war over in Ukraine between the Ukraines and Russia. I said that's a global conflict. You're going to see the Middle East go up in flame, the Golden Heights into flaming fire, the South China Sea into a burning bush in the Indo-Pacific. I have made it very clear that the next thing that's about to break out, and the Russians have been sending warning, it's a nuclear war between the West, NATO, its allies, and in the Europe, in the countries over in Europe, in the Baltic, in the Black Sea. And what you got here is not only, not only the great battle and the great war, and also the Ezekiel 38 war, and then you got Revelation chapter 19. But right now, for this moment, God is saying that what's coming next, because we're practically seeing the falling away, practically seeing the apostasy and the deception and the heresy and not only the corruption and the days of the great deception, but now the Lord said these things. Are you ready? Are you ready? God said, the time of Daniel, the abomination and desolation. Listen very closely to what he said just now. The Spirit of God said, now, now, the time of Daniel, the time, and he's speaking of the book of Daniel, the time of the abomination, the desolation. You got a seven new year cycle of the Shemitah cycle, and there is the start of the great jubilation. The Spirit of God has been making it very clear that the Lord is sending one final warning that the clock is about to expire. The clock is about to uh, run out and the Lord is about to take the church up in the rapture. And here's how he wants me to explain to you the reason why. From August 29, 2022 to September 5th, and I said, there's an eighth thing. And I said, for seven and ten days, the Spirit of God has been taking me into these, th these visions and dreams. But nothing greater than what the Lord began to decree. On August 29th of the 30th, he said, son, the dream, the voice, the open vision, he showed the harlot. Then he said, Islamic mystique. Then he goes on to take me into the seven bows, the coming wrath, the coming judgment. Revelation chapter 16, touch on 15. You can go read Revelation 17. Then the Spirit of God takes me into another vision. And then he shows me a satanic board. And I stare down that harlot. And not only I stare down that harlot, it. She was staring me down, and all I can do is remind her that I understand not only my kingdom authority, the kingdom authority that I've been entrusted, but the Spirit of God is saying to every believer and every saint, now is the time that you need to hold on, continue to not waver once, have an unwavering faith, an unwavering spirit demonstrating faith not only demonstrating faith but understanding one thing that the grace of God went on to talk about the satanic board he went on to talk after the satanic board before the satanic board excuse me he we went on to talk about a title called at the table who's at the table who will be at the wedding supper who will drink from the golden chalice cup who will be inside the pearly gates celebrating and rejoicing because the Lord took me into a vision, not only in the telecast betrayal, 
but also in the telecast in which we did when we spoke on the satanic board and we also went on to talk about the Islamic mystique, the dream, the vision, but also in the recap and the special telecast of the coming two seals, the Spirit of God said, there is coming a celebration. And the Lord just said to me these words, celebration, and he said soon, the, the blood, the trumpet will blow. And not only the trumpet will blow, the trumpet will sound, but I have said over and over, as I did a title call, the quake, the quaking sound, the sound, the sound of the trumpet, and God shaking up the church, and he said these words to me, you ought to rejoice right now, you ought to shout, you ought to praise, because I'm going to tell you what he said, he said, watch how he said it, a risen Christ, he's not dead, but alive. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. He's not dead, but alive. And what he said was, a risen Christ is coming back for his bride to take the church, the believers, and the saints, and every born again believer out of the earth. I want you to understand one thing, that the Spirit of God in the, the special telecast of the coming two seals, and I don't want to repeat myself, the Spirit of God took me into a moment where I was completely, everything went silent, my ear popped open, and the Spirit of God delivered His Word from Revelation chapter 8. And here are the PowerPoints to the sequence. Everything going forward happens in consecutive sequence. And we are at the climax of the sequence. But God just want me to remind you of what he just reminded me to remind you of. That was that little less than five minutes ago. He said in Daniel, he said in the time of Daniel, the time of the abomination and the desolation. People, we are going home very soon. And the Spirit of God said something also powerful to me. He said, look up because it's a two-state solution. And when that happens, all you need to do is look up because we are going right up in glory to meet the risen Christ, like he said a few minutes ago. And he said, he's coming for his bride, coming for his children, coming for every born again believer. And the Lord just dropped something so spectacular. The Lord said to tell you, be dressed and ready. And then he went on to say something even more powerful now, so that you can be clothed in a heavenly body. Glory to God. Let's continue from Revelation chapter 8. We're going to read again verse number 11. The name of the star is one word. A third of the water became one word. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Verse number 12. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. I want to stop here for a minute. We did a telecast called Dark Days. We did a telecast called Grossly Dark. We went on to say the vision at Walmart. It was pitch black and dark inside Walmart and the shelves were empty. I went on to tell you concerning the night that I went to throw out the garbage. I look up towards the sky a little bit after 10, about 10.30 p.m. at night. I looked up and I saw this massive giant and I went on to speak to you concerning Genesis chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. And I went on to explain that I believe with all of my heart that we are about to see the, the bottomless pit is going to be unlocked and it's going to be open. And we're going to see that beast rise out of the bottomless pit. I want to continue from verse number 13. And it says, and I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, 
saying with a loud voice, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. You see, <clears throat> there is coming a sound and there is coming a blast. And I believe that what you need to write down on this telecast, because God has made it very clear, very clear. He said the start of the great tribulation. And then the Lord is showing me now, remember the word shroud, and remember I did a title, the shroud, 5783, that's what he's showing me now. And I believe that we are going into the start of the great tribulation very, very, very soon. But I believe that before very, very soon, I believe the church will be raptured. Keep in mind, there is a falling away, there's the apostasy, there is the heresy, there is the times of the great deception. But as I said, when I did the vision of the key, when God opens up the bottomless pit, and then when I went on to do the title, the satanic board, listen to me. When I went on to do the title, the satanic board, I made it very clear that there is a satanic demonic invasion on the earth and believers cannot discern today, neither the time or the season, but the Lord just said to me, but we will be raptured. Let me say this, what he just said. He said, when I went on to say that believers cannot discern, the Lord follow up after I said that. He said, we will be raptured, but the believers are going up in the rapture. In other words, God is tired of sending final warnings. And not only tired of sending final warnings, but let's go back to the very first verse of Revelation chapter 8, and I'm not going to repeat that. It says, when he opened the seven seals, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Remember, I said to you, that's the first thing he said to me. The second thing he said was what? If you remember, I already told you. And then the third thing that God went on to say to me in that telecast, in that moment, when everything went silent, the third thing that God went on to say to me was the seven seals and that he will open up the scroll. And I have said that three years ago in Hong Kong, in the city of Hong Kong, I was standing in the pulpit on a Sunday afternoon and the, of God, the Spirit of God, that beautiful, still voice of the living God said to me, I will now open the scroll and I will open the seven seals. That was three years ago. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And what you need to understand, God just showed me a clock. And the Lord, I want to explain this. The Lord showed me a clock. And he moved the clock. Watch, you better listen. He moved the clock all the way to, to, to the midnight hour. Let me explain this again. Let me take my time. The Lord just took me into a vision. And the Lord showed me a clock. And he moved the needle, the needle of that clock, all the way to midnight. And now, what, and what the Lord is basically saying, there is coming a sound of a midnight cry. The doors are going to be slammed shut, and the Lord will take the church up in glory. God is sending a warning that the clock is about to expire run down to zero, and I just finished explaining to you, not once, but twice, that he showed in, the, in this open vision, he showed me how he was moving the needle all the way to the midnight, to midnight. And what God wants, what God's basically saying, that at the midnight hour, millions will be left behind. This was the title in which I've been wanting to bring to you, but I had the hope. This is the title which I wanted to speak to you, 
when I did the telecast and the special recap on the coming two seals. And when you look at the visions, and when you look at the dreams, dreams and visions, visions and dreams, and when you look at the holy and sacred conversation that God has been having with me, you can see the sequence of events. And God said what? Second Thessalonians 2, right? He said the falling away. Then he said the next thing that will start before it starts, there is a separation. Then the start of the great tribulation. And God goes on just to confirm. And God is making a solid confirmation. Listen to what I'm saying. God is making a solid confirmation and confirming what the Lord said the times of Daniel, and he went on to say in this telecast, the abomination in the desolation. I want to tell you that we are about to be raptured because in last week telecast and the week before that, the Lord said the start of the great tribulation. Two and a half weeks before that, the Spirit of God said the shroud 5783, the Shemitah cycle, and we're going into a seven new year period, but that period, it's a start of the great tribulation. I wanted to speak to you from Revelation chapter 8, and how God so beautifully opened my spirit up, and everything went silent. And after he opened up, listen to how, how I'm explaining to you. He then opened up my ears. And when he opened up my ears, the Lord delivered the word. And then the third thing he said was the seven seals. And that he is going to open up the scroll. And I told you that he said that in Hong Kong, in the city of Hong Kong, in 2020, on a Sunday afternoon. Can I just simply look into this camera, and I just want to say and reach out to all of civilization, to all of humanity, and to every living being and every human being that lives and breathes on this earth. I want to reach out to you and say this. You do not want to be left behind for the great tribulation. Let me say this again. If I was you, I don't want to be here for the great tribulation. I will be getting myself ready, prepared, locked and ready. And if you've never received Christ, this is your time because for the last two and a half, two and a half weeks, excuse me for that, the Lord has said the start of the great tribulation, the rapture, 2 Thessalonians 2 is, 2 is right in the glory of God said on this telecast, the times of Daniel, the times of the abomination and desolation. I hope that you make the greatest choice ever and the greatest decision ever in life because we are in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. We're in the very last hours and many in Chai Christ have gone into the world. But there is one, the Chai Christ, where the Lord will open up the bottomless pit what you got here is hell breaking out on the earth, but it's worse than hell. People will go into, not into a place where they're going to break into people's home. There is going to be suicides. There's going to be murdering. There's going to be rapists. There's going to be arsonists. There's going to be all kinds of things on the earth. And then you got the global war conflict which started over in Europe and Ukraine, which turns into a nuclear war, and the Lord said to me, atomic bomb. Let me make this very clear. That war over between Ukraine and Russia, it goes unsolved. It goes all the way. It leads to another war, to another war, to another battle, and another battle, and the 
then game over from Revelation chapter 19. The Lord comes back one more time to eliminate Lucifer, that ancient serpent in that dragon once and for all. And he goes into the lake of fire. In the Lord, show me these words. Revelation 21, verse number four. Let me read it for you. What it says in verse number four, and you rejoice. And God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. There should, there should be no more death, nor sorrow, no crying. There should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Let me read verse number five, Revelation 21. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Verse six. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountains of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Verse number seven, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Glory to God. God is coming for his sons and daughters at the beginning of the telecast or in the middle of his telecast. The Lord said that a risen Christ is coming back for his bride, coming back for his children, coming back for every believer, every born again believer, and every soul that has ever made that greatest, the greatest confession ever, and received Christ into their hearts as their personal savior. I just want to read verse number four again to you because that's the verse he gave me. And I just went on to read verse five, six, and seven, and eight, so that, and verse seven, so that you can rejoice. And it says these words, and verse number four, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death, no sorrow, no cry. There should be no more pain, for the former things have passed away, and the Lord is flashing to me. Remember last week, he kept saying over and over, and to emphasize over and over, he just told me, emphasize over and over, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, 28, and remember I went on to explain to you that when he showed me that, that chapter, Hebrew 9, and he showed me verse 27 and 28, these were the words of the Lord, new beginning. And remember I went on to explain prophetically what the Lord was saying and what he meant by that, that we are about to go over and cross over in this third and final crossover. We're about to cross over to eternal life and be with the Lord forever with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But before I close, I want to not only say this one thing, that in verse number nine, I just want to touch on verse nine, even though I said that I wanted to read verse four and that was going to be it. I want to read verse number nine. It says, then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Basically, when the wrath of God comes, when you see Revelation 16, look, God's confirming. I'm so blessed and I'm so glad that I read this verse, verse number nine, because look what he says. Look what he says there. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. That means that we will be where? In not only with the Lord forever, but the believers in the saints will not experience the great jubilation. We are not going to experience Revelation 16, Revelation 15. We're not going to experience Revelation 9. We're not going to experience Revelation 13. We won't be around when they enforce the mark of the beast because God said in the telecast, the coming to seals, God is about to seal. The Lord said, redemption. He showed me a door, a, a door popping wide open. And I see not only a glorious a glorious risen Lord, and what I see is that he's got his arm extended 
in giving, not only extended, but rejoicing that the church, the bride, is finally home at last with the Lord, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I want to turn to a chapter, even though I said I'm going to close, and God doesn't want me to close. Isn't that beautiful? I, I want to take you into a chapter because this is what he showed me. Are you ready? You ought to rejoice and you ought to shout. Remember about three or four minutes ago, I said I wanted to close. Then I saw verse number nine, and that is confirmation that the church, the believers and the saints, we won't be here. We've already been sealed. We've already gone through the through the judgment seat and the bema seat. We've already received our, uh, I believe we're going to receive our crowns of rewards, but I believe that we may have to wait for those of Revelation chapter six until the full completion of the Gentiles. I want to make that very clear. But here it is. Exodus chapter 19. You ought to rejoice and shout. Because remember the beginning of this telecast. Or in the middle of this telecast. He said a risen Christ is coming back for his bride, his children, and every born again believer. And then the Lord took me right here. Exodus chapter 19. Verse number 4. Let's all read it. All out, all out loud, and you can read it to your children. You can read it to your husband and your wife and your children, and you can go ahead and encourage your pastor for the whole congregation to read it on Sunday because we are going home soon. But here is Exodus chapter 19, verse number 4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Glory to God. Did not the risen Christ, that blessed Savior, that matchless, beautiful name of Jesus, did not the Holy Ghost declare something powerful and said to his servant, he said, Exodus, Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle, eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. Just, just as it says there, that what he did to the Egyptians is exactly what he's going to do to the globalists, to the left, to the pagan, to the Roman Empire, to the papacy, and every single one on the left, and every pagan, and every heathen, every witch, and every warlock. I want you to know that the believers and the saints are going up in glory because God just declared to me Exodus chapter 19 verse 4 and then he went on to close wanted me to close with Revelation 21 verse 4 but then the Lord had me read verse 9 and then not only after I read verse 9 I want you to understand that the glory of God is saying get ready because there won't be no more sorrow, no pain, no sickness, no cry, no tears, no pain whatsoever, no tears coming down from your eyes. All you're going to do, you and I, is we're going to rejoice at the glory and the glory of God. Amen. We're going to be in the glory. And the Lord just said to me, the be my seat. You better pay close attention to Hebrews 9. Verse 27 and 28, because more than likely, with that chapter, with 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, and Hebrews 9, 27, 28, the Lord in the third and final crossover crosses us into a new beginning and a new life with the Lord forever, with the everlasting perpetual Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his son Jesus Christ and Nazareth, in the Holy Spirit. But before I close, remember what he said that in the time of Daniel, and then he went on to say, abomination and desolation. The church is going up in glory. Remember to click like, share, subscribe, hit on the bell to receive our latest telecast. And remember, I catch you on my next telecast of catching though, God bless.